Hi, I'm Vanessa, and let's talk about the agentic era. So we'll start off by uh, going into why now? Um, why are we speaking so much about agents now? What is the definition of an agent? When it makes sense to be using one? And let's look at what's under the hood. So why now? Um, it's a valid question considering um, AI has been launched officially in 1956. Uh, however, most of the um, snowball effect that has, has been happening started in the 2000s and later because there's been a lot of breakthroughs in deep learning. And then 2022 is when um, OpenAI launched ChatGPT, which became really mainstream. And then models like DALI2 for image um, creation and then stable diffusion for um, text to image generation really continued to make the um, AI and Gen AI and agent topics even hotter. So uh, like we've just showed, there's been huge leaps in innovation cycles. Um, which sort of explain why now it's such a, you know, hot topic. Um, and if you've tested, for example, the O1 release of ChatGPT that was done in 2024, you can really see that it's been a game-changing um, uh, leap in, in what a model can do with uh, um, reasoning, essentially. And what it leads is to a momentum in um, mainstream in using these tools like OpenAI. So for example, now ChatGPT has 400 million daily active users, DAO, which is huge for a company that's so recent. And um, if you look at the way people are changing their behaviors, Gen Zs right now, 61% of them are reported to start a search with um, with an LLM, so with an agent, uh, which drastically changes from the way people have been operating in the past where a lot of the searches were actually starting in Google. Uh, so all to say, people are using these tools, which then in turn drives crazy valuation for you know, private companies like OpenAI or Anthropic, but also uh, for public companies that are in the same space or that are in the underlying infrastructure like NVIDIA that has multiplied by 12 their valuation since 2020. Um, and the consequence of that it ha is that these companies like NVIDIA has a disproportionate impact on the NASDAQ, so on the public markets. So every time something happens at the NVIDIA level, it has actually then a huge impact at the NASDAQ level. Um, and then finally, the other reason why we're uh, hearing about this so much right now is that it, uh, there's a lot of topics around um, the threats to the US um, hegemony in terms of AI. Um, most of the people in the space have always thought that US was way ahead, but when you see things like the releases from DeepSeek, you can see how China is actually um, much closer to the US than everyone expected. And it's a threat to the homogeny, but it's also showing you know, new forms of IP theft uh, with data going back to China. Um, and so it's also a cybersecurity risk. Uh, so all of these things are uh, essentially why we're speaking so much about agents right now. So let's go and deep dive into what is an agent. <laughs> so um, it's a system that perceives its environment, processes information, and takes actions autonomously to achieve specific goal. So um, again, it just understands its environment because it's being fed the data it processes information because there's um, a way to be able to reason, and then it can take action um, because again, it has impacts to multiple systems and has access to multiple systems to be able to take those actions to drive a specific goals because every agent has been programmed with a goal. For example, you're an agent that's here to help me to support in customer cases because I work for an e-commerce e company, for example. Um, so it can take 
lots of different shapes. To be honest, it can be something super simple, like a rules-based type of agent, but it can be also very advanced uh, with agents that can learn over time. So um, the first kind of agents are reactive agents, and essentially it responds to an input without having access to memory. So for example, if you um, deploy an AI spam, fil spam filter in your inbox, uh, then it doesn't really require you know, a lot of thought process to be able to do the work. While um, deliberating agents, for example, can use planning and reasoning. So they're more like virtual assistants. Um, you might often hear the word RAG to be able to describe that. And essentially, it's the underlying framework to be able to support these agents. And RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. Retrieval because it goes and fetches the data. Usually, it's augmenting the data um, that, um, that has been retrieved, and then it generates an answer and an action for the user. You have learning agents that can improve their their performance um, either using data or using experience over time. Uh, so you might have seen the uh, Boston Dynamics Atlas uh, robots that um, is sort of crazy looking, to be honest, it learns uh, locomotion and balance over time. Uh, so that's one of those learning agents. Um, you've definitely heard of self-driving cars. That's another form of learning agents. And they learn because they can optimize the path planning and the driving strategy over time based on all the data they're gathering as they're driving. And then um, the last type of um, agent category is the multi-agent. So essentially, it's a string of agents that either collaborate or competes with one another. You might wonder when it makes sense uh, to use one for you. Um, I'd say that the, the most common one is the knowledge use case. So uh, the RAG uh, that we're just talking about, um, you know, you ask questions, you have an LLM that supports you to be able to have an answer, and you can have some that are general purpose, like the one that you're, have, you're seeing for ChatGPT or Gemini or uh, Claude from um, Anthropic. Uh, but you can also have specialized uh, forms of RAG that um, understand deeply a very narrow uh, or niche market. So um, it could be about, you know, specific um, manufacturing capabilities, for example. And so you don't want to search the whole uh, uh, data that has been fed from for ChatGPT to be able to answer appropriately these types of questions. You need to have a specially tra um, trained uh, agent to be able to do the work. Uh, another uh, time when it can make sense for you is if um, in your day to day you have highly repeatable tasks, um, that could be something that then is automated by an agent. So for example, if you work again in customer success and pretty much everyone's asking the same question all the time, like how does your pricing work? Well, actually, um, that's the type of um, tasks that can be easily automated so that you don't have to focus on these types of questions and, questions and answers. Um, and then the last one, which I would recommend is, you know, skilled base use cases. So there's uh, some things that um, agents can do very well that are very mature now, like text summarization, um, idea generation, being able to go through um, a lot of documents and to be able to extract insights. These are the types of things where an agent can support you. But uh, as always, you need to verify, you know, the work that's been provided to you. So you might wonder what's under the hood. Um, and uh, it's pretty much always the same type of stack um, that is built. So uh, the user uh, interfaces with an application, um, just like for everything in tech. Um, an application could be, you know, ChatGPT, but it could be also if you're, um, I don't know, on, on Expedia, you might have an AI function there. And so that would be the application layer. And then the application communicates to um, models that are underneath via APIs. Um, and so then you have underneath the APIs, um, AI models. Uh, you can have one, two, multiple, depending on how the applications are built. Uh, those models are hosted 
um, on cloud platforms like AWS or Google Cloud. And um, the hardware that is being deployed in those cloud platforms are hardware like um, NVIDIA is the most famous one, but ARM also provides, for example, uh, chips for to be able to host those um, uh, AI models. And then underneath you have all the connectivity because you need to have access to the internet to be able to be running everything. Um, sort of vertically across the whole stack, you'll always need some kind of um, dev tooling to be able to support the deployment of all those layers. And that's it. You have a very complete stack that uh, where sometimes the players are in the application layer and in the AI layer. So for example, ChatGPT is the application and underneath the AI models are OpenAI. So these, this is the same vendor. Um, you could think of the same way with um, Google that has Gemini, which is an application. They have their own models as well. And then it's hosted on Google Cloud. However, right now they're not using their own chips to be able to uh, host the models. So then they still need to partner with other um, vendors there. So it's not super clear cut, clean cut, sorry, um, you know, where each vendor, vendor is stand. It often is across multiple areas of the stack. So I hope that you found this uh, video useful. Uh, and I thank you very much for your time. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.